Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be talking about penetration testing and some of the details around how it works and logistics and specifically things like scope. So what exactly is penetration testing? So, well, not surprisingly, it's testing to see if you can penetrate something, which means you're going to check to see whether you can break into a particular thing, whether it's a server or in applications, depending on the type of engagement you've got. You may have the ability to try to break in physically to a location, but primarily what you're going to be doing with penetration testing is you're going to be trying to break into systems and networks and applications, and that's the kind of what it's all about. And this may actually involve social engineering attacks. So it may require you to make a phone call to somebody and get them to give you their username and password or some other type of social engineering attack where maybe you send a URL via a crafted email. Sometimes it's just strictly a technical approach where you're running scans and you're running Metasploit and you're gaining access. That way, or maybe some other type of technical application sort of connection, sometimes it's physical access that you need. So in order to get access to a particular system, if you can get physical access, then maybe you can get in. So that was all about, that's what exactly penetration testing is. It's checking whether you can get into a system, whether it be physically or on a network. So what are the goals of penetration testing? The goals would be to assess weakness in an organization, security postures, you want to figure out what they're vulnerable so that they can go and fix these problems. You want to help them understand their risk positions better and what they can or may be able to do to mitigate those risks. And ultimately, you want to be able to access systems in a particular way to find weaknesses. So those are really sort of the goals of penetration testing. Now, from a result standpoint, when you're done, you're testing what you are going to do. Well, you're probably going to generate a report. And by that, I don't mean you're going to run some automated tool and you're going to get it to generate a report for you. You're actually going to give that to the client. You're actually going to give your report to the client and then they're going to write you a really large check. So that's not really how it works. You're going to write a report detailing the findings in a detailed way so that it includes what did you do to find out what you actually found out and how you can actually mitigate that particular risk. So you should really include remediation activities in order to fix this vulnerabilities that you find. And it's pretty easy to walk around saying, hey, that's a problem and that's a problem and that's a problem. That's really not a lot of value in that where there's a value is that, hey, that's a problem and here's how you can go about fixing it. So let's talk about the scope of penetration testing. So firstly, you want to actually realize how big is the bread box and how specifically, what is it that the you two of the two of you have agreed that being you, the ethical hacker, and the other guy being the authorized person to give you permissions to ethically hack, have specifically agreed that you can do penetration testing and you can target them as an organization or the client. And what you have agreed to are any exclusions or any sort of areas that they say you're not allowed to touch. So anything so, like if they've got a database server maybe, or there's a lot of really sensitive data on it, and there's a little hesitant, and they may put a don't touch this thing clause in the scope. So there are a lot of different reasons why they may exclude areas from the scope, and if they exclude them, then trust their reason and listen to them. What they have to say in terms of this is what we want you to accomplish. So along those lines, you really need to get a sign off from the target organization. Now we've talked about this before and this is certainly all about the ethics and the trust and it's also about legality because if you do something that you don't have permissions to do, you could be prosecuted for that. So definitely get the scope very clear in writing and with signatures attached to it as to what you can and what you can't do and always get approval from the right people and make sure you get somebody who has the right level of permissions and is the right level of management so that they can sign off on its understanding and accept the risk that is associated with a penetration test. So let me talk a little bit about security assessments and how they differ from penetration tests. The security assessment is a hand in hand approach with clients. So you would walk in doing a collaborative thing where you're a trusted partner and you ally with them and your goal isn't to penetrate them and point out all the things that are really bad, but it's to get a full assessment of the risk that the organization is exposed to and you would probably provide more details about fixes that maybe you would in a penetration test. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to walk in and make sure that the policies and procedures they have 
in place are really what they need for the organization and the risk appetite that they've got. And we're going to make sure that the policies and procedures have controls that can tell us whether they are being actually adhered to or not. So the procedures and policies are being followed. A security assessment is probably a little bit more comprehensive than a penetration test. And you would look at more factors to assess the security postures of the organization in their overall risk. And you would tailor the output based on their risk appetite and what they're most interested in. And that's not to say that I'm going to tell them what they want to hear. But if there's something that they know and I know that they're just not going to do, I'm not going to be making a big deal out of it because they're already aware of it. And I'll make a note of it in the report just for a complete sake. But I'm not going to go out in a lot of detail. So it's really kind of a hand in hand collaborative approach where again, you're not just saying that they want us to say we're providing some real security and risk guidance towards their activities and other things. So it may provide an unrealistic view. So you've got a week let's say to do this penetration test against your target. Now you're going to have to go in. You're going to have to get set up. You're also going to have to start doing a bunch of scans and make sure that you're gathering information and screenshots and data for your reports. You're going to have to do all sorts of activities. Also during the course of that week, you're going to be engaged in probably beginning to write your report and getting a sense of what is going to say and what's going to be in it. If you don't actually get any major penetration during the course of that week, the organization may feel like they're quote unquote secure. That's one of the reasons why penetration testing, while really sexy and show, is nice and all. But if an organization walks out of it believing that in a week you didn't manage to get to know, get the keys of the kingdom, then they might must be secure. That's really a misguided view because a dedicated skill and motivated attacker isn't going to just take a week or some portion of that week. They're after something, they're going to dedicate themselves to, to it and really go after it. So just because you didn't find a penetration in some subset of a week doesn't mean that they are secure and ill and invulnerable to attacks. It just means that during the course of that particular week and other circumstances that were in place, you didn't get a penetration that was really significant or major. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything beyond that. And if an organization walks away feeling like they're secure, they're going to end up not fixing the real vulnerabilities that may be in place that could expose them to significant risks. So that's penetration testing, its scopes, its goals, and how it differs to security assessments.